know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. Jesus told them there, he said, what man of you having a hundred feet? And he loses one of them in the wilderness. Doth he not leave the ninety and the nine in the wilderness? And he goes out and he searches for that one. You know what every single one of you was? You was a lost sheep. You know whatever one of us are today? We're a sheep that's been found. We're a sheep that found the shepherd, Brother Dale, and he brought us in. He said, doth he not leave that ninety and nine in the wilderness? And he goes out and he searches for that one lost sheep. And he said, when he finds that one that is lost, does he not lay it over his shoulder? And then he comes back into the camp and he says, come and rejoice with me for I have found that one which is lost. Why was there more rejoicing about the one that was lost? Because the ninety and nine already had the shepherd. He knew where they were there. He knew what they were eating. He knew they were all right. But he was looking for that one. Jesus will look for you until the very last breath leaves your body. If you don't believe it, follow me around a little bit. The person asked me a question the other day. This lady on the telephone asked me a question. Do you believe that God forgives people on their deathbed? Now, I don't want you to take this wrong. I do not want anybody to go out of this building today and say, Well, Brother Grant, I can wait till my deathbed to get saved. I'm not saying that. Don't you take this wrong. But I, I know a lot of poor lost souls. Brother Roger Sinners that have waited. Now that's not the smartest thing to do. You know the, what the Bible says is? The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil days come of not, and thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. What he's saying is, get saved early. Get right with God. You know why it's, it's precious when a little child comes down? A little child was asking somebody the other day. They was about seven or eight years old, and, and, and they was telling them down the altar, they said, ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. And I think I'm telling this right. And they said, what, what have I done? I, what, what have I, I, I don't know what I've done. I'm a sinner. I guess I'm a sinner. You know what that little individual ought to done? Just said, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. If I sin, forgive me. But if I hadn't, Lord, just come into my heart. You say, I don't believe that can happen. I can tell you one thing. I've got grandchildren today that's six, seven, eight, nine years old. And, and they tell God, I got saved. Little Seth one day was, I don't know what he was doing. But he's watching some Heather had on uh, on the I can't get it all right. I'm trying to hurry. But anyway, he told her he just started just a bawling. And she said, What's wrong? He said, uh, Jesus just came into my heart. You say, You believe that? Absolutely, I believe that. You say, Well, I don't believe. Well, I believe what you want to believe. Hey, Amen. But if I, I choose to believe that Jesus saves who he will, and, and he comes into people's hearts, you say, Well, I wouldn't tell him that. I didn't tell him that. He told me that. He called me up on the phone. She said, Tell Paul what happened. He said, Jesus just came into my heart. <laughs> I could have left their house for five times. Hey, now, I want to tell you something today, friend. It's real. You need a shepherd. And Jesus is that shepherd today. My friend, Brother Bill over here. I love him so much. Met him several years ago. We, I won't go into how we met. We just made a little business deal there. I bought some cash off of these, getting rid of them. And the veterinarian said, you won't find none no better in the county than what that man's got. So I bought them. We became friends. But you know, I also got to see him brother morning. I back on Easter Sunday morning. Received Jesus Christ as a shepherd. Absolutely. I told someone the other day, I said, if just being a good moral man will get you to heaven, he just slid right on in. But you know what? Just being a good man won't get me to heaven. Just being a good woman won't get you to heaven. We've got to have a shepherd. Listen, 2,000 years ago, God looked down in a world that was in a mess and He gave His Son. And His Son gave His life. And when Jesus died on that cross, you know what He said? Whosoever will, let Him come and take Him the water of life freely. It's for the black. It's for the white. It's for the rich. It's for the poor. It's for the famous. And it's for the nobody on the street. Jesus is the shepherd. And you need Him in your life today. Friend, you might say, Well, I'm just a young man, and I've never gotten saved. Well, right now is the best time in the world to find the Lord Jesus. David went on to say, He said, He, he, the gate will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I stood in the home of one of my dear friends the other night, and they're going to bury me today at 2 o'clock. And I stood in his home the other night, and I was, I, I was just in, in, in a terrible shape. I just couldn't wait until I could get gone. Not because I didn't love him, not because I didn't love his family. But I guess the older I get, the more it bothers me to see people in a dying condition. 
God tell you, friend, we're just dying to live. That's all it is. And I'll look down at his little gaunt face and his little jaw was all uh, gone in and, and he opened his eyes and he thanked me for coming to see me. I held his hand, rubbed his brow, and I thought one of these days I won't see no more people like this. One of these days, you burn up, we'll say so long to this whole world. But you know what? He had told me. He said, I'm all right. Everything's okay. I'm just a winner either way. If the Lord comes for me, I'm a winner. If he leaves me here, I'm a winner. And you know, when I walked out of there, I thought, he ain't afraid to go through that valley because there's light in that valley, brother. I said, there's a light in that valley today. You know who that light is? Jesus is the light of that valley. Oh, listen, brother. Somebody said, I like that God on the mountain. Yeah, but I like the lily that grows in the valley. Oh, yeah, when you're passing through the valley, you just reach over and see that lily, Brother Wendell, and you know, Sister Rhonda, that he's right there with you, that you don't have to worry, that you don't have to fret, because God ain't never, amen, forgotten who you are. He knows the richest of the rich. Listen, he knows President Obama today, but he also knows that man laying on the street in Nashville, Tennessee. He knows the governor of this great commonwealth, but you know what? He knows a little old preacher boy down here in Scottsville, Kentucky. He knows everybody. And he loves everybody the same. God's not loving this one that way. And that one, he loves all of his children. Every one of us, he loves us the same. Regardless of what you've done, if you've been a good at it, God loves you. If you've been a prostitute, God loves you. If you've been a, a drug peddler, amen, God loves you. But he don't bother messing in. He loves you too much to let you die like that. He wants to save you. David said, when I walk through that valley, he's going to be there with me. He said, I ain't going to fear it. For he said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know what he done with that staff? Brother Roger, he went over that cliff a many a time and pulled one of them little lambs back up there. That it fell over there so he could tell his daddy Jesse, I saved one of our little baby lambs. Amen. Man, I saved one of our little sheep. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. There's a lot of times that God's blessed you and you really didn't realize it. He's blessed you right in the presence of people that hated you. People that fought against you. People that tried to despise you. But God gave you favor. God blessed you. You know, Saul hated David. Just like some of you go to that job on Monday morning or, or, or out there in that world trying to make a living. And people are ugly to you. They're mean to you. And they talk about you. They say all kinds of things about you. But let me just tell you right now, friend. Hey, man, if God's with you, He'll put you a table in the presence of Him. He'll bless you going in. He'll bless you coming out. He'll make you the head, not the tail. And the world's going to look around at you and say, I don't understand how that man gets by. I don't understand how that little woman makes it. I'm telling you, they got to be somebody that's walking with her. You know who it is? She's got a shepherd on her right hand. He does that never does leave her and never does forsake her and walk with her through every storm and every trial and every temptation. Amen. And when God, amen, is on your side, you and God make the majority. Amen. You don't have to worry about the rest of it. He said, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Brother Clyde Walker does a good job singing that song. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup is overflowed. Amen. He sings that sometimes and I, I get to thinking about how many times Brother Bill, I drink out of my saucer because you run my cup from over. And I just think, Lord, I don't deserve that. I, I just say, Lord, why did you bless me so? Why did you touch me? Why did you help me? Why did you do that? And then just like you'll say, because you're my child. Why do we help our children sometimes? Why do we help our loved ones? Why do we reach out to our neighbors and try to help them because we love them? And why does God bless you? It's because that He loves you. Let me just, please don't make a show of it, but I just want you, while you're sitting right there, right now, listening to my voice, I want you to just start thinking with me just a minute how God's blessed you. You know, all you ever want to think about is how this didn't go through, or how that failed, or how this happened, or how you bumped your leg, or how you broke your hand, or how you done this, and how you done that. You see, the devil gets you to focus on that. He, he's got your mind off of the other things. But why don't you stop and think about